Hey y'all, it's Ryan. Hey y'all, it's Ryan, and today I am so excited to be talking with another graduate student, Kara Davidson, about a paper that she co-authored about how healthcare practitioners can provide anticipatory guidance for breastfeeding related pain, which is a big barrier for many women to sustain breastfeeding. I appreciate this topic because postpartum pain is often ignored or minimized in contrast to the expectation of postpartum joy at the whole miracle of life, right? But bodily changes and related pain is such a big part of adjusting to not being pregnant anymore, which happens really fast compared to how long pregnancy is. So I hope to have more videos on topics like this in the future, and let me know in the comments if there's anything you wanna hear about the postpartum time specifically. Okay, but back to today, let's hear more about Kara's work now. Hi, my name is Kara Davidson. I'm a Master of Science student who will be beginning a PhD in the fall of 2021. I study intimate partner violence and maternal infant health. Today, I am sharing a new paper from the Women's Health Matters research team titled A Guide to Anticipatory Guidance for Breastfeeding Related Pain, a Concept Analysis. So why were Kara and her team interested in breastfeeding specifically? Breastfeeding is widely considered an optimal source of infant nutrition because it impacts several health benefits for both mother and infant. We're talking reducing risk of allergies, eczema, asthma, colitis, diabetes, childhood cancers, sudden infant death syndrome, and more. Mothers benefit from less risk of postpartum depression, breast and ovarian cancer, osteoporosis, diabetes, hypertension, and more. And this is why the World Health Organization recommends that mothers exclusively breastfeed, that is, provide no other solids or liquids, even water, to their infant until at least six months of age. However, a common barrier to sustaining breastfeeding is pain. For example, while about 89% of Canadian women initiate breastfeeding, only 26% breastfeed exclusively until six months. Shockingly, anywhere from 34 to 96% of breastfeeding women experience nipple pain and trauma, which can cause them to stop breastfeeding. However, we know that breastfeeding related pain usually resolves spontaneously within seven to 10 days of initiation. Another question here is, what are the options for healthcare providers to actually help women prepare or cope with breastfeeding related pain? And this is where anticipatory guidance comes in. Anticipatory guidance is a clinical skill that can be applied in any situation where patients receive preventative information regarding what they should expect, how to prevent undesired health events from occurring, and how to overcome barriers to their goals. Okay, so that covers the background of this topic. Let's hear more from Kara now, though, about the specific goals of this paper. The goal of this paper was to conduct a concept analysis informed by Walker and Yvonne's approach to provide an operational definition of anticipatory guidance for breastfeeding-related pain, as one did not yet exist for use. Ideally, this would help improve prenatal education programs and promote clinical use of the concept to help women sustain breastfeeding despite pain and thus inherit those maternal infant health benefits. They used a method here that I got to learn about for this video called a concept analysis. And I'll let Kara explain this since she knows a lot more about concept analyses from working on this paper than I do. We adopted Walker and Yvonne's concept analysis approach, which systematically explores a concept to determine what the concept is and is not. Following this approach, eight steps were employed. Select a concept, determine the aims or purpose of analysis, identify all uses of the concept, determine the defining attributes, identify a model case, identify borderline related contrary and invented cases, identify antecedents and consequences, and to find empirical reference. Okay, so what I'm getting here is that essentially concept analysis explores a specific concept to understand and provide guidance for how cases might actually present in real life, which is really valuable to help healthcare workers know how to appropriately respond and anticipate people's needs. We also generally really like specific construct definitions in academic work. As for defining attributes, we identified three, timing, content, and intention. Timing is key as guidance must be provided proactively, but also given during a period in which parents can reasonably imagine themselves in the experience. Therefore, anticipatory guidance for breastfeeding related pain must be delivered before the development of pain itself, but still within the period in which women can imagine themselves breastfeeding. 
Overall, literature specific to breastfeeding related pain suggested that it is preferable for anticipatory guidance to be delivered during both the prenatal and immediate postnatal periods for optimal outcomes. The literature indicated that the content of anticipatory guidance for pain caused by breastfeeding should address the commonality and brevity of pain in addition to coping strategies for the pain to sustain breastfeeding despite it. Finally, the attribute of intention referred to the goal of providing said guidance. The literature indicated that the goal of anticipatory guidance for breastfeeding related pain was to help women reduce their pain, help women cope with their pain, and sustain breastfeeding, thereby improving maternal and infant health. And to me, this is a really key point because the goal is both to sustain breastfeeding, but also to reduce the pain experienced while breastfeeding. And this matters because goals that only focus on the infant and ignore the birthing parent might reinforce this feeling that postpartum trouble just won't be focused on. For example, Dr. Jen Gunter has written about how this mythology around pregnancy and motherhood leads to a stigma that comes to admitting that maybe it's not actually the fairy tale experience that's so commonly depicted, right? Dr. Allison Stoop has also said of these postpartum dynamics that essentially the mom is the wrapper and the baby is the candy. So that's one reason why I'm really interested and passionate about studying the health and well-being of the pregnant or postpartum person, along with any early life research that might focus more on the infant. Antecedents are things that must occur prior to the delivery of the concept. In this context, it is essential to have maternal intention to breastfeed and educational interaction with a healthcare provider. In North America, the vast majority of women do seek prenatal care and one quarter to one third partake in prenatal education, so this is certainly feasible. The consequences of providing breastfeeding education using an anticipatory guidance approach, that is things that occur post-deployment of the concept, include improved breastfeeding outcomes, including initiation, duration, and exclusivity, enhanced maternal understanding of common breastfeeding challenges, such as breastfeeding related pain, and a sense of empowerment and or confidence in relation to pain management should pain occur. Ultimately, this supports improved maternal and infant health. Importantly, the goal of this anticipatory guidance is not to ignore or sort of under focus on this pain. Instead, anticipatory guidance here provides validation of the seriousness of that pain, as well as information about the timeline for when that pain should subside. However, breastfeeding can be a really complicated experience for a lot of women, and I know I've had friends who've had really more extreme versions of breastfeeding pain. So we also wanna be sure to emphasize that breastfeeding doesn't determine whether or not you're a good parent, right? And ultimately, the most important thing is having a baby who is fed. All right, y'all, that's all for today. Huge thanks to Kara for sharing her research with us today, and be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends for more videos like this.